What's going on YouTube? What's going on Instagram, Twitter, Face, um, Facebook, all platforms? YouTube, what's going on, man? Another episode of Big Pat Sports Talk reacts. And yes, I have another subject that's came to mind. Now, this subject is Do the New York Giants and wherever quarterback is going to be playing for, whereas Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, whoever the quarterback is, do we need a number one receiver here with the New York football Giants? Do we need a number one receiver? Now, I've been on record, and I've been called crazy more than a few. I've been on record saying that the New York Giants took one of those Ohio State receivers at number seven. I wouldn't be mad. I would not be mad. Reason why is I believe a legit number one receiver for these guys for the quarterback, whoever it is, is a legit concern and need. It's a legit concern and need. It really is. Just going to be honest with you. A number one receiver does wonders for your quarterback. It does wonders for your team. And right now, can we legitly say any receiver on this team is a number one receiver? Now, don't get it twisted. This is not me saying, oh, the Giants don't have talented receivers. We have talented receivers. Kenley Galladay, talented, 6'4". Can go up and get that 50-50 ball if you put it in this area. But is he a number one receiver? First of all, he's hurt too much. Second, he's not a very good route runner. Thirdly, can you depend on him if he's not getting the ball the way that he wants to get the ball? Can you depend on him to stay into the game, get into the game plan and not get frustrated? Can you depend on him to make those big plays when you need a big play made? Can you depend on him to keep the chains moving? I think you can a little bit. You get on the ball, I think you can a little bit. But is he number one receiver caliber to you guys? As the media say, as the New York Giants fans say, he quit. He's not worth the $20 million, the $18 million we're giving him. He did not make the catches that he was supposed to last year. He can't run routes. He doesn't get open. You always have to make a tough pass to him. And he didn't come down with a lot of tough catches last year. So can you legitly say he's a number one receiver? I don't think you can. Let's go to the next guy. Kadarius Tony. Extra talented. Explosive. One of the shiftiest guys in the NFL right now. Very fast. I think he's an absolute dog. But a number one receiver? I don't think so. I think he's a weapon. I think he's a weapon that if you have number one receiver on the field, maybe even a number two receiver on the field, that he can eat you alive in the middle of that field. When it comes to route running, he's going to have to learn to be a better route runner, which he's getting better at. And, oh, yeah, he has an injury history as well. It goes back to Florida. Well documented. And I, think, I just don't think he has the route tree to be a number one receiver. I think you need to use him as a weapon, like how Tyreek Hill was used earlier in his career, how he, how he was used with the Chiefs now. I think, you, I think you have to use him as a weapon. I don't think you could just line him out there at the number one receiver slot, the X slot, and say, just go beat that man all day, every day. No, I don't think, I don't think he's that type of player. Matter of fact, I know he's not that type of player. And other questions come up. You guys don't even think this guy wants to play football. A lot of these guys are calling him a clown. Some people even called him a thug. 
Some people say he's not committed because he didn't show up to voluntary workouts. Some people say he's injured too much. Some people don't like his attitude. Some people just say he's just not a fit with the New York football giants. He's the new OBJ. With all that said and done, you think he's the number one receiver on this team? Nope. I don't think he is. But I think he could be a valuable weapon to this team, and I think he can explode if given a chance, yes. But a number one receiver where you have, where you have to count on him day in, day out? Mm-mm. Let's get to another receiver on the team. Mr. Sterling Shepard, a.k.a. Riggs. We call him Riggs because he's always hurt. Torn Achilles, torn ACL, strained knee, strained calf, strained ankle, high ankle sprain, injury, 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 injury every year. I had to take a pay cut to stay with the team this year. Glad they did. I'm glad he did stay with the team because I think he could be an asset as well. But number one receiver. No, first of all, first of all, I don't think he's big enough to be a number one receiver. Not saying that it, uh, a guy of his stature can't be, because there's a guy named Steve Smith Senior out there, Steve Largent. There's plenty of smaller guys that have been number one receivers in the league, but he's not dependable. <laughs> he's an injury waiting to happen, and I think he's best fit for the slot. I just don't think he's a number one receiver at all. At all. I don't think he's a number one receiver, and I don't, I don't think he comes close to being a number one receiver. And let's just see if he could just stay healthy this year. Let's see if he could just stay healthy this year, because when he was playing, Daniel Jones was finding him. And so we have, we have plenty of talent at the receiver at, uh, on this team, but they have to stay healthy. All of these guys have missed multiple games just this past year, multiple injuries as well. And so, with that being said, if Daniel Jones really doesn't have a number one receiver to throw to, and also these guys are injury prone, would it be so outlandish to take a guy like that that's on the screen over there, Garrett Wilson at number seven? If Garrett Wilson turns out to be the receiver that I believe he's going to turn into, the next best thing at receiver... What do you think the field would look like with those four guys on the field? What do you think if you had to turn your attention to Garrett Wilson because he was so explosive, he can make you pay? He's a good route runner. He's fast. He knows how to sit down in the zone to get himself open for his quarterback. And he can be used in multiple ways. What do you think that does for the offense? Does you think that closes the field off? Or do you think that... It opens the field up tremendously. Think about that. What if these four guys were on the field for us? Then we got Slayton to back them up. We got Reuben Foster to back them up. I mean, Robert Foster to back them up. We got David Seals to back them up. What if he turns out to be that number one receiver? That... That helps up your court. That helps out your quarterback that much more. Could you imagine those four guys being on the field? And I know what everybody said. Oh, we have way more pressing needs than receiver. We need to fix the offensive line. We need to get a dominant edge rusher. We need to get a linebacker. Hell, we will take a DB if we get rid of Bradbury. We need another safety. We need a tight end. I understand that. I really do. I think we need tight end just as much as a number one receiver. But if you could get an all-world talent, we got two first-round picks, people. Two, not one, two. If you could get your right tackle at five and get this guy or whoever you feel is the number one receiver between him and Chris Olave at number seven, why wouldn't you do it? 
What if that kid turns out to be the number one receiver in this draft and he balls out and he shows you why that he was picked that high? You guys want an offense? That's all I hear. 30 points, 30 points, 30 points. Well, getting a guy like this allows you to put up 30 points a lot faster than what we have right now. I'll tell you that. What if this guy turns out to be our number one receiver and then you have to focus on him? Then you got Kenny Galladay on the other side. Now he's not a number one. He's a number two. Those back shoulder throws become a lot easier when it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now you got Shepard and Tony working the middle of the field. Those option routes, those slant routes, those zig routes, those dig routes become a whole lot more dangerous when it's one-on-one -on -one and everybody's not focused on one a certain play. Everybody just can't sit in the middle of the field. Now you got a defense where a linebacker has to cover Kadarius Toney or, or Shepard. What if they draft Rucker on top of it? Oh, my goodness. We might have an explosive offense, folks. And guess what? We can still fix the offensive line. They've done a lot to fix it so far. So before you just write me off, call me crazy, call me stupid, dumb, whatever you want to call me, hear me out. I just want you to hear me out. What if this kid turns into be a number one receiver and we got all four of those guys on the field at the same time with a Jeremy Rucker? With an offensive line that's formidable. A top 20 offensive line. We don't need... A number one offensive line with weapons like that on the field. Oh, did I forget to mention Saquon Barkley? You guys love him so much. What if he stays healthy with those guys? Ooh. Ooh. You got a half decent offensive line with a Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Toney, Sterling Shepard, and a Garrett Wilson, and a Jeremy Rucker. Ooh. I don't know, folks. Kind of like the sound of that, man. Think about it. Just think about it. That sounds like a lot of fun, folks. A lot of fun. Now we got a five receiver set with Riggs, Kadarius Tony, Galladay, Wilson, and Rucker. Or Saquon Barkley, if you want to put him out there, if you don't want to put a tight end in there. We got a tight end that can stretch the field, move the chains, block, a, wide re a number one wide receiver that can route you up, get deep, stay in the zone. Kadarius Tony showing that he can stay in the zone. He's showing that he can run better routes. Him being loose in the middle of the field. Sterling Shepard, if he can stay healthy, he is dependable when he's on the field. He is. I'll give him that. A Kenny Galladay that can win 50-50 balls for you, can come down with that tough catch that's motivated. They teach Daniel Jones to do the back shoulder. He's catching those hard digs across the field, snagging it over people. Oh, my goodness, our red zone offense. Oh, my goodness. What a nice playbook. Because you know Daybo and Kafka are going to draw up something real nice for you. Imagine being on them five receivers set. You don't know if they're going to do a receiver screen. You don't know if they're going to do a quick hitch. Oh, I forgot. Daniel Jones is a weapon too. You put that five receiver set, you spread everybody out. Guess what? Quarterback draw. Not as crazy as you think I am. And getting the receiver in the first round with that number seven pick. Like a Garrett Wilson or a Chris Olave, I prefer Garrett Wilson. It's not such a crazy idea, folks. It's not such a crazy idea. You get Garrett Wilson and Rucker to put up with the guys that we already have, I could see an explosion on offense. We've already did great things to fix the offensive line. You get a right tackle with that number five pick and get you a center and maybe a guard later on in the rounds so they can come in there and compete with the other guys. 
What if King and Green falls to the second round? You grab King and Green. Andrew Thomas, King and Green. Max Garcia or, uh, uh, man, I forgot his name. Phil or something. Glowinski at right guard. Evan Neal at right tackle or Iquano at right tackle or Cross at right tackle. I think that's a formidable, formidable line. Then you get to then you get to add Garrett Wilson, Jeremy Rucker to it. If you could get Rucker in the third round, or whatever tight end that we bring in, what if this is a Trey McBride? That's a legit offense. What's Saquon Barkley in the backfield? That's a legit offense. It is. You can't tell me that it's not. And that's why I brought her bringing a receiver to the table at number seven. You're still getting your offensive line, folks. You still could get an edge rusher in the third round. It's not going to be a Jermaine Johnson or a Thibodeau or Hutchison or Trayvon Walker. No, it's not going to be that guy. But guess what? Wink Systems never really had that guy. The best guy he's had is Matthew Judon, and he's second tier. Good, but he's second tier. I believe Ojolari can turn in that, into that for us. And guess what? Just because we don't get an edge rusher this year in the top doesn't mean we can't get an edge rusher in free agency or the next year. But can you imagine our offense with that? Garrett Wilson, Jeremy Rucker, Riggs if healthy, Kadarius Tony if healthy, Kenny Galladay healthy. It makes it that much easier for whatever quarterback you want to bring in because we they still fixing the offensive line. It's not like they neglected the offensive line. And you get your right tackle with the first pick and maybe get a guard like King and Green with the, with the pick in the second round. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I think we'll be all right on offense, man. But that's just food for thought, man. This is Big Pass Sports Talk Reacts. I'm talking about talking no matter what you thought. And you guys in the comments, just tell me, man. Do you do? Just think about that, man. Just listen to what I'm saying. Don't cut me off immediately because you hear receivers. Oh, whoop, nope. If you're not talking about offensive line or, or edge rusher, I'm not trying to hear it. No, man, you got to think about many different scenarios. There's, there's more than one way to do in this, man. This guy's stupid. He's talking about a receiver. Did you listen to what I said? You can still get offensive linemen with the number five pick. And one of those offensive linemen dropped like a King and Green in the second round, which I think will happen. You get you a guard in the second round. The offensive line of Andrew Thomas, King and Green, Feliciano or uh, Garcia at center, Glowinski at right guard, Evan Neal or Cross or Equano at right tackle. I think that's a pretty good dang line, man. And if healthy, that's a major if. I understand it. But if Saquon Barkley, Tony, Shepard, and Galladay can be healthy with a Garrett Wilson and a Jeremy Rucker, tell me that offense couldn't be explosive. Or tell me I'm crazy. Either way, just tell me something. <laughs> but, man, that, that's that's my take on this one. Do the New York Giants need a number one receiver on the football field? I'm saying yes, we do. And I think we can do it in this draft at the number seven position. If they did it, I won't be mad. If they don't do it, I won't be mad. 
but I'm just saying it's food for thought. Open your minds, man. Open your horizon to a whole different scheme of things. You always, guys, always want to say, "Oh man, you gotta get catch up with the times, Pat." Joe, you're too old school. You got to catch up with the times. Lou, you're too old school, man. You got to catch up with the times. Big Blue Crew, you got to catch up with the times, brothers. You're old. No, I, I think I may be thinking outside the box a little bit more than you think. It may, it may just, it's just not the popular opinion. So maybe that's why you say the things that you do. But I'm not here to give you a popular opinion. I'm here to give you a opinion, a logical opinion, opinion that comes with facts, opinion that comes with logic. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here to report everything that everybody reports. I'm just here to give you a piece of, of my mind. And that's why I love doing this channel. Just give you a piece of my piece of my mind, and I love to hear you guys' comments. No matter if you call me crazy, or whatever, man, it's cool. Just to get the people talking, just to get the people thinking. That's what this channel is about, and that's what this channel is going to continue to be about. That's what the Big Blue Crew is going to continue to be about. So you guys, let me know. Do you think the New York Giants? need a number one receiver on the field my answer is yes whether we get them this year or whatever a year to come we need a number one receiver here in new york but i'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of big pass sports talk reacts just giving you a piece of my mind i enjoy doing this content for you guys thank you guys so much but don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button and if you want to talk your talk with Big Pass Sports Talk and stand out above the rest, hit that join button, man, and talk your talk with Big Pass Sports Talk. Because like I always say, I'm going to talk my talk no matter what you thought. And to the next episode, peace. This has been a Big Blue Crew production.